Next, we have another legend, an All-American at Notre Dame and an eight-year veteran of the NFL, someone who I've looked up to for a long, long time, someone who's shown me kindness and shown me what it means to be a Notre Dame man. Please welcome the Hall of Famer himself, the skinny man now, Mr. Ah. Mike Gullick. Mike, what's up, man? Ryan, how you doing, man? Let me tell you what. Watching that Regis Philbin and, and Pat O'Brien, that was my freshman year. Really? I mean, yeah, 1981 was my freshman year, so I was just a snot-nosed kid running around on campus. So I had some experience here because my brother Greg was a sophomore then, and my brother Bob, you know, had graduated in 79. But, yeah, I had just gotten to campus. or was just on campus that year when that interview took place. Did you get to catch Regis or no? Did you know no, he- I got – I, I didn't there, but I got to know Regis pretty well um, afterward when I was in, you know, the business, you know, the media business. Um, got to know him pretty well. Talked to him uh, a bunch of times, certainly about Notre Dame a lot. But uh, uh, it, it was a years after that when I finally met him and we did a lot of reminiscing about Notre Dame. What a, what a great Notre Dame man he was. Absolutely. Even when I was getting recruited, they were telling me, you know, Regis Philbin comes here for games. And I was like, wow, Regis Philbin. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I mean, he's he's a legend. But then, you know, I got to meet him and you've got to meet him. And much like you, Mike, what does it feel like when you meet some of these Notre Dame greats? As when I met you at Charlie Weiss's event, I'm like, wow, this this Notre Dame is really real. We're a family here. People care. What what I enjoy and I and I hope continues because I certainly been removed of it as a player myself. But then obviously with, with three kids going there, the last one, my daughter graduated in, in 2016. So not that that long ago. But I like seeing the athletes there, especially in, in the sport we play, the football, understand the past. You know, when, you, when we, we both played for a number of years in the NFL, and you, you want players to know the history of the NFL, but there's just something about college and the history of your college. And certainly the history of Notre Dame is one of the greatest histories there is in college football. So I love it when young players come in and understand the history and are still kind of wowed by the history of Notre Dame when some of the, the former Heisman Trophy winners or teams from uh, title players from title teams come back, that there still is that, even from the players, that kind of, that awe thing, like, yeah, this is why I came to Notre Dame, or this is one of the reasons I came to Notre Dame, because of the heritage and the tradition. Well, and it sets you in your place pretty quick as a freshman, right? Yeah. We, yeah, yeah. We, we're good, and then, I mean, and even when I went to the NFL, the Steelers, the first thing they put in my locker, someone, I don't know who, well, there was Jerome Bettis and some other Notre Dame greats who would play there, Rocky Blyer, and, and the Super Bowl rings underneath it. And no message, nothing. Just some Notre Dame guys on a, a on a poster there. And it's like, whoa, I got a lot of work to do. Who was that for you when you got to campus? Who were you like, wow, I really got to have a great game if I want to be like X? Well, you know, I had a unique experience, Ryan. When, when I was 12, my brother Bob went to Notre Dame in, in 1975. So I got to kind of see – it from the eyes of a 12, 13, 14, 15 year old. And those are the years when my brother Bob was there, go up those years, you know, even before, but in that title year, Ross Brown or Willie Fry, you know, Ken McAfee, Joe Montana, you know, my, my brother, Bob Vegas Ferguson. I mean, all these guys that I got to know as a young teenager, you know, as my brother's teammate. So I was in awe on that. And then watching them, you know, there wasn't the title games then, but it was when they beat, Texas and Earl Campbell in the Cotton Bowl that they were rated, ranked then number one in the country. So I got to meet those guys. And then like it, in that awe kind of sense when I was a teenager. And then my brother Greg went there in 1980. So when, when my senior year in high school, I, I was going to commit to Notre Dame uh, at that point. But when I got to visit him, now I kind of saw players on par, you know, kind of my peers then as opposed to when I was younger. But i tell you what. What a wake-up call. My freshman year, this was back when the freshmen reported first. We worked out together for like three days, and guys on the defense and me were like Joe Johnson and Mike Gann. You know, on offense, it was like Mark Bavaro, Larry Williams on the line, and we'd all work out amongst each other. And then the vets would come in. All of a sudden, those one-on-ones against the freshmen got a little different when I lined up against Tom Thayer and Phil Posderick, and they were knocking my ass back 10 yards going, Okay, this got real in a real big hurry here. I'm sure you called your brothers. You're like, hey, did you could you give me a heads up, guys? Oh, 
Talk now, about learning. You know what? But as you know, it is everywhere. You get knocked down, you get back up, and you do learn. You either learn or you get out of the way. <laughs> And, and speaking of your brothers, I had the chance, by the way, Bob broke the Rudy story to me uh, over lunch one day at Notre Dame, but Bob and Greg, and then later your kids, and, and we'll get to that part as a parent, but what's the reason that brought all the Golics to Notre Dame? How did that start? Well, it, it obviously started with my brother, Bob. He was heavily recruited in 75, and what a what a scene that was. Again, I'm, I'm 11, 12 years old when he's being recruited, and one day we have Woody Hayes in our house, and as he's leaving, Joe Paterno's coming in the house. I mean, so, you know, and you're like, wow, you know, this is this is wild. And it was, you know, Dan Devine uh, there with, were, for, with my brother Bob. But it kind of started there, and I wasn't, obviously, I wasn't involved in his recruiting process. But after all the visits he took, you know, between him and my parents, my parents were very, very strict on education and getting a degree. And they felt Notre Dame offered the best of both worlds, which is, you know, certainly what we think as well, uh, having gone there and gotten our degrees. So that kind of started it for us. And then that kind of got the ball rolling. As I said, me and my brother Greg got to go see that school as 12 and 13 year olds for four years. So it really kind of became ingrained in us. So when I got recruited, you know, by the USC's and the Ohio State's and the Miami's and the, the Texas's of the world, I had had so much already ingrained in me about Notre Dame that I didn't really think of any place else I wanted to go. I mean, that's always where I wanted to go. And when Jerry Faust gave me that call, it was a, it was a no brainer. And Mike, you know, and last question for you here, you know, when, when you go to Notre Dame and play for Notre Dame, Notre Dame never leaves you. What were a couple of things that you took with you, not only to the NFL, but through parenthood and, and into broadcasting, what were some constants that you learned at Notre Dame from either the Notre Dame curriculum or tradition or a coach you had that you've kept with you? Well, I, I think you you hit the word there, tradition. And, and I know every college has their tradition. So it's certainly, I'm not banging on any other college and any person, an alumni normally thinks their college is the best, but the, the deep tradition, the family-like atmosphere, I, I still think there are people out there that don't understand there's just 8,000 undergrads on campus. You know, you think of these big schools, 30, 40,000, this is eight, 10,000 people. You could walk from one end of campus to the other in 10 minutes. So, you know, I, I always think of it, and this may be, sorry, if dating you, like the old show Cheers, you know, in the bar in Boston where everybody knows your name. You know, you kind of get that family feeling there because it is a smaller place steeped with so much tradition. So I got to experience it as a little kid, then as a player, and then as a parent where I met my wife there and you know, we went when we were both in school there and then got to raise three kids who were all fortunate enough to, to play sports at Notre Dame and get that same feeling that we all had. I mean, it's I guess the best word I can use to describe it is family. That, that, that's what Notre Dame is to us. One more last thing, though. Now, when you go back to campus, what's your favorite place on campus? I don't think that ever changes uh, for me, the grotto. Um, I mean, I, I, whether it's the day or certainly at night when you go there, there's just something calming about it. My, uh, I have one son who's married, Jake. Uh, he married uh, uh, Jenny Facillo. She was, ran track at Notre Dame. So their marriage was in the Basilica. So that was obviously cool. That's a beautiful place to see. But I, I, I would still say that it would be the grotto if you had to pick one place. Uh, that, that would still be kind of that place that always kind of draws you to at least just kind of sit there and let your mind wander a little bit. We could spend 30 seconds, yeah. 33 minutes talking about all your accolades, but Mike, it's been a joy to watch you. I've learned so much from you. Thank you for your kindness. He is Mike Golick, Notre Dame legend. And Mike, enjoy the booth this year, man. Enjoy the booth as much as you can. Oh, can't wait. Can't wait to be calling games again. Thanks, Ryan. Good to talk to you.